students welcome to the physics lab today we'll be performing experiment with the convex mirror what is a convex mirror we have already learned what is a concave mirror look at this spoon this side is the reflecting surface of this spoon so this side i call convex of course this spoon the radius is very small if i consider this side as the front face then this becomes a concave we have done one experiment the concave mirror and you also know how we get the image when you say a convex mirror again i found this ball and this is a convex mirror i was just looking at my face and i could see my image inside and i found that i look appear to look by images it's virtual erect and diminished have you seen this mirror elsewhere yes it is the rear view mirror of the car on the sideways the person the driver can see what is happening at the back of the car so view now about the convex mirror now we have to find out the focal length since we get the virtual image we cannot use the method which you use for concave mirror so what we are doing is we have a special method so before doing the experiment let us learn the ray diagram and how we are going to find out the focal length look at these two diagrams in the first diagram there is a convex lens and this is my convex mirror you can see this is the opaque part and this is the reflecting surface you can keep an ob we are keeping one object in front of the lens why are we using the lens because the lens will actually converge those rays and make them fall on the mirror so let's see first we keep convex lens and the mirror at some distance which is m we have called it m we keep the object pin here and then we try to see the image we find the image which is inverted and then we need to remove the parallax and we remove the parallax when we will get that image wherein which falls in line with the object only under one condition that ray is coming this way falls on the lens and the lens converges that ray and this ray is incident on the surface of the convex mirror the ray which falls normally on the surface of the convex mirror has to retrace the same path backwards reflected by the image you get here similar to that all these three rays which i have shown all these three are coming at this point and the image is formed so when we look in, inside the from the object side we'll find the image and the object are moving together and there is no parallax so now you very well you know that that ray incident ray incident ray is falling normally on the mirror what is the angle of incidence which ray falls normal that means this ray has to be along the radius of curvature of this mirror what is the angle of incidence can you tell me angle of incidence is the angle between incident ray and the normal this is my incident ray and this is my normal so angle between incident and normal is zero so angle of incidence is zero so this is all about the first part of the experiment now in the second part of the experiment if this mirror was not present then this ray would come and fall here now look at again we will look at this diagram this is the radius of curvature when i say if it is reproduced backward this way that means this point has to be the center of curvature now if this mirror was in there this ray would have gone and we would get this image on this point in line with the center of curvature so that means this ray is on the point of center of curvature of the mirror if this mirror was there so in the second part of the experiment what we do is we remove the mirror and we come this side and we look from this side and remove the parallax and get the image distance 
the image distance we get it here. So let's say the distance between the lens and the image is equal to i and distance between the lens and the mirror is equal to m. That means this is the radius of curvature is i minus m. So radius of curvature is equal to i minus m. We got the radius of curvature. So this is the experiment. Now we have to find out what is the focal length. Now let us say that this distance we got total i, I got as 37 centimeter. And let's say this m is 7 centimeter. So we get the radius of curvature as 30 centimeter. Therefore focal length is radius of curvature divided by 2. We know that radius of curvature is twice the focal length of the mirror. Therefore, we get this equal to 30 divided by 2 which is equal to 15 centimeter. In the laboratory, we have to perform the experiment for four different observations. Now see, suppose by chance the first reading we keep the distance between the lens and the mirror is 7. Then perform the whole experiment and we get the value of I and then find radius of curvature. Then we can increase the distance by 1 centimeter. Like this we take 4 readings for 7, 8, 9 and 10 and we get. But every time we have to get radius of curvature as a constant. Let's go to the laboratory and perform the experiment. Hello students. Now we have come to the physics lab and we will perform the experiment. I have already told you the theory behind convex mirror and how to find the focal length uh, by finding radius of curvature. Now let's start with the experiment. To start with, you can see this is the optical bench. These are the four uprights we have. This upright is we have put the lens. In this upright we have put the convex mirror. In this upright we have put one pin and then we are going to remove the parallax. You know definitely what is the theory. So I won't go up there. The ray of light coming from the object falls on the lens, converging lens, the ray falls on the mirror and it retraces the same path when the parallax is removed. So to begin with, we have kept the lens at 44 cm on the optical bench. You can see the optical bench here, 44 cm. Exactly 11 cm from 44, so it is 55. At 55, I have kept the mirror. After the mirror, what I do is, I come this way, I come this way and I adjust this pin in such a way that I move it forward backward in such a way that I remove the parallax. I can nicely see that the pin inside that is the image and this object are moving together. So once you do that, then what we have to do is, we have to remove this mirror from here, keep it like this. So now that way which was falling on the mirror, it, we have to touch the object. So the same thing they will come and meet the other side. Image is found there. Let's see where it is. So we go that side. And then I move it forward backward and see I got the parallax. I move the parallax, we are moving together. So what we get is we get the reading as 85.7 cm. So this is 44, this is 55, and this is 85.7. So then we do the calculations. This total distance from here to here minus this 11 cm is nothing but the radius of curvature of the given convex mirror. Now the value which we get that is i minus n is 30.7. That means 2f is 30.7. So what is the focal length? 30.7 divided by 2. This is the first thing. Same way we keep back this. Let me see I am putting the upright here. And again I change this distance to 12 cm. So where should be our uh, mirror? Mirror will be at 56 cm. 44, 56, 40, 56 minus 44 becomes 12. Again, we have to remove the parallax from the other side and then they are moving together. Then remove the mirror again and remove the parallax from this side. 
So you will get another set of reading. Like this, we continue taking the reading for 11 cm, 12 cm, 13 cm, 14 cm, and last difference is 15 cm. And then we get all the values. You can, you'll be definitely happy to see all our values are almost constant. One, first one is 30.7, then 31.2. Like this, we take the readings and then we divide by 2. Divide by 2, so we get the reading of focal length. And then find the average of the focal length. Otherwise, we can also do one thing. Find the mean of uh, I minus M. 30.7 plus 31.2 plus 30.1 plus 30.7 plus 30.9 and divided by 5. Whatever average you get is nothing but 2F. That is the focal length of the mirror. 30.7 is the radius of curvature of the mirror. And then divided by 2 becomes focal length of the mirror. So we get in the range of 15 or we will find the average and we write the reading. That's all about our experiment. Now, just a, a quick brush up I'll do on the concept. The ray of light from the object comes here, falls on the lens, falls on the mirror, normal to the surface. Means the angle of incidence is zero, retraces the same path and comes back to the object. Therefore, they move together. There is no image is formed on top of this. We got it. Then we remove the mirror and then the same ray which fell, which was falling, exactly normal to the surface has to be coming from the center of curvature because if that will be taken back, retrace the path, you will find that it will be the center of curvature. And the same way I have not touched the object. So the ray will definitely travel and image is formed at the center of curvature. So what we are getting? Distance from mirror to this image is the radius of curvature. And we have done the experiment successfully and we get in the range of 15 points uh, we have to find the average and take the right reading. It's nothing, no calculations are required much except finding the average. I think you will like this experiment very much. It is successful. Thank you so much. See you in the next session for more videos.